Our new series, Robotics Revolution, explores the impact of artificial intelligence on humanity. We begin today with a machine on the moon. Scientists at MIT developed a cheetah you won't find in the wild. This robotic feline could one day reach places that are too dangerous for humans to enter. Anna Jacobson is on the MIT campus in Massachusetts with a first look at the technology behind the cheetah. Dana, good morning. Good morning. MIT will be hosting some of the brightest minds in technology today at the first ever TechCrunch conference. The very latest in artificial intelligence and robotics will be on display, including this 90-pound four-legged robot, Meet Cheetah 3. Powered by a complex algorithm made of aluminum, Cheetah is one of a kind in the robot world. She uses less energy than a microwave, runs smoothly, and each of her joints can generate as much power as a sports car. The hope is one day Cheetah will become the first ever robot first responder. Cheetah can dance. Yes, so <laughs> being able to move this uh, smoothly wasn't uh, possible before. Inspired by the world's fastest land animal, Cheetah 3 runs on a complex computer system and is powered by customized electric motors. Bring the box. For MIT us. professor Songbei Kim and his team have been working on the Cheetah for about seven years. When I first started, you know, just pure ambition to build something like a cheetah that yeah. can run and turn and fast. A lot of people told me, like, you're trying to do something science fiction. Guided by the animal world, Kim set out to solve one of robotics' biggest challenges, mobility. Like, everybody look at the cheetah and say, wow, look at that spine. Look at the backbone. It's bending and exploding. That's probably why they're fast. The machine cheetah reaches speeds of 30 miles per hour. Cheetah 3 has twice as much torque or rotational force than earlier models, and its 12 joints give it four times more flexibility or range of motion. Robot cannot actually have as many muscles and joints like animals because the increasing number of motors is too expensive. We need to actually increase the range of motion of each joint. Alexa, open Cheetah. Cheetah even responds to commands powered by Alexa voice technology. Welcome to MIT Cheetah Control and packs sensors similar to the ones used in ballistic missiles. One day, the cheetah may be used to help care for the elderly or in disaster relief. Within five years, Kim thinks the cheetah could be deployed in dangerous situations like the Fukushima power plant meltdown. They haven't been able to send anything that can actually do physical work, like a closing valve or removing debris. Many power plants where radiation level is high enough that we don't want to send a human. But there are limits to artificial intelligence. Cheetah, wiggle. Cheetah wasn't in the right mode to respond to our commands, just part of the learning process. And while you may not be able to take Cheetah home, someday you may be able to 3D print a robot that literally walks out of that printer. Robots building robots. That's right. <laughs> Rob McCurdy, a postdoctoral associate at MIT, can print this robot in about 24 hours. So I can add the motors. He then adds what he calls the heart and brains of the robot, the battery and the motor. You have to bring this robot to life. Right. The computer may help you create it, but it's still not ready to go. That's right. I'm imagining robots like this that are expendable. So maybe they go down in some really dangerous place or a really contaminated place, do some job. They go down and grab something and move from one point to another. And then the robot is disposable. We have 30 robotics labs on campus now. MIT's uh, Toyota professor more. of robotics, Russ Tedrake, says the robot Absolutely. revolution Absolutely. is limited by a very mundane reality, short battery life. So people think that robots are going to take over if we keep teaching and building. Is that a fair assumption? You can run for more than about five minutes. <laughs> then, <laughs> then you'll be there. If you can fine. outrun the robot, the, you're OK. The battery's going to die yeah. before it gets you. But, um, <laughs> I think that there's a natural trans transition from the robots in the labs now into the robots doing meaningful work. I think we have to do that mindfully. We have to think a lot about the implications. But I think the potential for good is just so incredible that you wouldn't want to stop it. You may have heard the comments by Elon Musk over the weekend that if artificial intelligence isn't regulated, that it will become a danger to humanity. Tomorrow, we're going to explore that idea while we get into humans and robots working together. Jeff, we even are going to take a look at a brain-controlled robot. Wow, Dana, thank you. So the laws that surround it, that, that is a big, yep. big point of discussion. The next frontier. Worth, worth yep. discussing. It's here. Yeah. Fascinating series. More to come tomorrow.